So I know we covered this in the settings portion, but if you go down to email settings and fill this out, fill out whatever the SMTP server information you need to do, give it a username and a password, tell it where it's coming from, a from address, maybe avid at classondemand.com, and a to address, which would be whatever you have on your cell phone would probably be the best, so it goes to your smartphone, and send a test email to make sure it works, and then from then on, anytime a render is completed, it will send you an email when that render is finished. If I select my trim mode here, I'm in slip mode now, the four-way monitors allow me to see my outgoing frame and my two incoming and outgoing frames for this middle shot and my incoming frame on the last shot. With these four displays, it's much easier to understand my trim. Let me show you the other display mode. That's useful when you're doing dissolves. If we go into the trim mode on this dissolve and click on this little icon here, it's the transition corner display, and it gives you six different images. And what these images are is the first, middle, and last frame of your outgoing shot and the first, middle, and last frame of your incoming shot. And where this is really useful is in pre-edited material or material where your camera person has started and stopped uh, recording and you might be uh, jumping from one shot to another shot and not knowing it. This way you can see your entire dissolve and if one of these images is different than the other two, you know that you're getting a flash frame in your dissolve. Let's say I'm in my sequence and I mark an in and an out on this clip and I want to cut in a new clip into this space. Clear my mark ins and outs on this side and I mark an in, or let's say I mark an in way down here, this is where I want to cut in, and I try to do an edit here, it says insufficient source material cannot make this edit. That's because there's not enough material between my in point and the end of the clip to fit in this space. Well, how do you avoid that? Well, there's a thing in your composer settings called phantom marks. I'm just going to go find that. And inside composer settings, under the edit tab, is phantom marks and when I turn on phantom marks what it does is now if I move my mark in back to here it shows me a fake mark out I didn't put this in it's a phantom mark out and it allows me to know that if I you know for example mark an in point there that there's enough media and I can also kind of look around that area oh that's what it's going to look like at the out point of this clip it allows you to kind of look in your source monitor to know where your in and out marks are going to be for example I'm going to mark an in there and so I can see, oh, there's the out. When I go to cut this in, that's about where it's going to be. And it also works for endpoints. If I want to clear my mark ins and outs, I can also mark an out there, and it will give me a phantom endpoint. So I can see, you know, did I get enough footage before her swing? Yes, I did. So then I can do that edit. If you've got a very, very long sequence and you want to be able to edit with waveforms on, and if you ever get yourself into that instance where they're taking too long to redraw, you can actually do command period to stop the redraw of a waveform. That's a useful tip right there, as a matter of fact. But what's even better to do is just to show marked waveforms. To do that, we're going to go to our timeline setting right here in the settings window, and here's the check mark under display to show marked waveforms only. I'm going to select that. And we're going to say OK. And you'll see that now we're only showing the waveforms between our in and out. So if we're trying to, let's say, work on this edit right here and we want to be able to see our waveforms as we work, I'm zooming in. Let's say I want to make sure that I don't have this little noise right here. This is a way for us to be able to work on that edit, be able to see our waveforms, but only be drawing the little teeny piece that's between our mark in and out. Huge time saver. Another little trick I want to show you comes from Avid's News Cutter. This is a little functionality that they added to all the media composers and all the Avid products, and it's called Top and Tail. To get to Top and Tail, Command-3, right, to get your command palette, and then open up your active keyboard, and we're going to drag Top to any key that you want. I've dragged it to A, and Tail to any key that you want. I've dropped it to S. And so once you've got those things dropped to A and S or to any other keys, the way top and tail works is it's actually a macro. And so if I'm playing through my footage and I've got this voiceover track, it is exclusive to D. So I've got a little bit of junk at the top of it 
right here at the locator is where I actually want my audio to start. To De Marini. Wherever I leave this blue timeline locator bar, I don't have to mark an in, I don't have to mark an out, I don't have to do anything. If I hit the A key, which is my top key, it will delete the top of this little segment. Just A. Boom, it's gone. Now if we play from there to D Marini, it's perfect. I do the same thing at the end in the bottom of the ninth. So bottom of the ninth, that's the end of this, and the rest of it is just junk. If I hit the S key, it puts an in at the blue bar, it puts an out at the end transition, and does a little ripple edit. Boom. And if you listen, it's made a perfect edit. Hitting that monster bomb in the bottom of the ninth. P, the end. You put it in a week. So you can see how fast you can work this way. So I'll actually do this as fast as I can, hitting the A key and the S key. Of the ninth. P, the N, U, A, U, and then at the end, Marini, S. So just a very, very quick way to edit with top and tail. The mouse settings allow you to set you know, your scroll rate, which is nothing that unusual. It allows you to map any of these buttons, for example, the play button or an edit button to any of your mouse buttons or any of your shift, control, and alt buttons on your mouse. So if you want your control center click on your magic mouse to be add edit, you just drag this up to there. And from then on, holding down the control key while clicking on the center mouse button will get you an add edit. So basically an undo and redo list. For example, I just did all of this uh, editing with top and tail and all of those little cuts that were made. If I wanted to undo any of those edits, what I can do is go up to edit. If I just hit command Z, it will undo the last thing or command R will redo the last thing I did. But I also have a complete list of all the different edits that I've made. And if I wanna go back 10 steps, then I can go back 10 steps and undo all of those things. On longer sequences in Final Cut Pro, what I wish I had a little bit more control over is zooming to a specific region or area of the screen. I know I can do Command Plus and Command Minus. I can zoom to selections and zoom to my timeline locator. But one of the cool things is by holding down Command and M, you get this funny little icon with the two arrows in either direction. And if I lasso a specific portion of the sequence with this, it zooms into the, exactly the region that I lasso. So there's the zoomed portion of the sequence. If I hit command and uh, backslash or question mark, that gets me back to being able to see my complete sequence. Let's try that again. Command M. So let's say I wanted to just zoom in on this section right around this transition. Boom, there it is. So just a real nice thing to be able to zoom into a specific region of your timeline.